let it go and um, let this transition come in because they have children. They're going to want to have grandchildren, and they're going to want them to survive too. And let this be the end of the world of the people that have been running this thing. Let it be the end of their world, not even necessarily the end of their lives, but the end of the world that they've operated where they felt they had to have power and control over us. Yep, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you for uh, sharing that with us tonight, Craig. Uh, I didn't know if anyone had questions, but I believe you covered some great insight and uh, sharing some thoughts on some writings that, that everyone has uh, ability to get to and read on the website. And and that is a great place to start. I know I've had my older children um, on all those things that you just recommended, and all of us have been um, reading through those, and, and it's very, um, it's just, it is awakening, you know, to, when you try to keep the, keep them from being, um, having their spirits muddied, I guess, from once you discover uh-huh. their lives, and you, you want them to be able to seek the information and have it with pure, pure heart and open mind. And um, it's really interesting to see the difference <laughs> where you don't have to get rid of baggage and get rid of junk and you can oh. go into go into the reading with the open heart and open mind and open spirit. So, so that's, uh, a, that's a prayer that I've had too for mine. My my youngest is now 16 and um and I and I'm battling those that are within the the, the, the traditional Protestant church right now that are, are really desperate to keep my kids hooked in there because they know, they now know, I mean, I, I had tried for years to save the Christian church, thinking that ministers and lay people in the churches would actually want to know the truth. And there were some that would listen, but they'd invariably go back into what they felt comfortable, which is to basically believe that they're sinners. And when I started pointing this out to my sons, um, um, they they've started questioning. The, the first they'll, they'll come back and think they know apologetics better than me. They'll realize, oh, shoot, Dad studied apologetics. <laughs> so I could debate the subject back on them and throw it back on them and make them go back to their teachers and, and, and they can question stuff. So at least the doubt is there. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, I had to go through this process myself. I mean, you know, when I left seminary in 85, um, I was kind of a broken man. I got married that year. And I, you know, I, I, I was like a failure to everybody. But ultimately, I look back now and go, that was a blessing to not have ever accepted ordination into any one of their, their uh, denominations to have to perpetuate the lie. And so I can honestly say for myself, my conclusions, I'm not putting words in Frank, but um, that the, the, the words of Jesus that are in the three Gospels, I don't particularly trust Luke's Gospel at all anymore. So I'm pretty much setting that one aside after some discussions with Frank and reviewing it more. But the, there's there are portions in Matthew's Gospel that you can find the truth and then a little bit in Mark and in John's Gospel, which is written in a little bit more complex way, um, is the, there's answers there. But if you go back into the onefaithofgod.org and look at the scriptures there that were brought out by the Nag Hammadi texts in Egypt and the, the um, Qumran Dead Sea Scrolls in, in Palestine, those are, those are remarkable and um, they show our, our direct connection with the divine creator and uh, who we are. And um, there's no duality. And that's why Jesus, that, I believe that's why the real teachings of the real flesh and blood, physical Jesus have to be suppressed either one of two ways. One way is to say that you have to accept a wholesale hook, line, and sinker. If you don't accept the Bible as the word of God, you're crazy. Problem is when you ask people what's the word Bible in Greek, it's the word vivlos. And vivlos simply means book. So it's like, which book? You know, and then there's a simple way to challenge that, too. With Irenaeus, when I was in seminary, it was pointed out clearly, and I'd heard it taught before, but it was clearly all the evidence was laid out for me, that this guy named Irenaeus um, was the one that wrote, was one that assembled the books. Well, Irenaeus um, was a student of Polycarp, known as Papias, also known as Papas, I've been told, P-A-P-P-A-S, like my, fam- my, my current spelling of the last name. And um, he, uh, these were rascals. And they were bishops, they were involved in making money, and they were involved in controlling people. And from the very beginning, I never understood how it was that men were so easily brought into the concept that there were to be bishops, episcopos, and, and elders, presbyteros, 
we get the word um, Presbytery and, and Episcopal, Episcopal Church from, that when Jesus himself never endorsed any, none, zero, not one. <laughs> so if he didn't endorse them and Saul of Tarsus did, you know, I always had a problem with that. And so the books that were laid out by him in the second century, which ended up being codified at the Nicene Council in 325 of the Common Era under Constantine's tutelage, um, that's what always bugged me. And that's why to go back and find out more. And then when you read the writings, and you can, they're, they're posted, all the writings of Marcus Aurelius are posted. You can read them. He was a great uh, philosopher as well as an emperor. And um, he, uh, he wrote about the insanity of the Christians at that time and what they were doing and why he had to put them down. You have to listen to the modern Christian teaching of why he put him down is to think that, you know, he was the bad guy and what he was doing. He was putting down Mithraism because that's what they were practicing. They were practicing Mithraism, and he had to stop it. So, um, you know, but of course, Christ, regular mainline Christianity is never going to teach you that. Mm-hmm. So I, I, that's why I would go into the, 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 the Frank's books laid out there in, in the one faith of God. They're magnificent. The writings of Jesus are absolutely they, they will give you chills when you read them, the four books. They will, to me, they were uh, uh, tremendous eye-openers. So th- there's a freeing right there to know what the real writings, what the real thoughts of Jesus were without having them manipulated through doctrines. Yeah. Well, um, as a reminder, I know the, uh, Ron was reminding us over here on the chat that um, most of the books and read, writings and uh, are there on Eucadia, our university, dot Eucadia dot info website at U of U. So if um, those of you that are looking for a place just to go, one place to get those, most of them have been converted to PDF. Ron's been doing, and several others have been doing some work to get those over on U of U. And you can go to download section, or you can actually do a search uh, uh, on the Eucadia. Uh, University of Eucadia website as well. So hopefully, um, possibly, Ron, it looks like some requests have been made to do a list. Um, if we can do a list and put that on the front page of University of Eucadia website, that might help folks. This has been a um, great call. We really appreciate you, Greg, coming on tonight and um, well, sharing with us and sharing the, the uh, insight you have and what you've experienced, and as well as Ron. Thank you, Ron, for coming on and um, we were uh, we were wanting to make sure we could all still get on tonight uh, even though Frank was unable to make it and uh, it's all of you and uh, those of you that have joined us tonight that make this all happen and we really appreciate everyone for your participation and for your questions and uh, Greg did you have anything else that you wanted to wrap up with before we call it a night? Yeah, let me oh, just come up and give a list of the books. Go ahead, Terry. Um, well, real quick, it looks like I've got a couple of callers and uh, would like to ask a question, possibly. So, are you okay, okay. with that? Okay, I'll take them. Give me, a list. give me, give that list out one before you take the call. I'll just give the oh. list out of of, of the book. Okay. Um, I would. Oh no, go ahead. You can take the call first if that works better. How about that, Lynn? Lynn? Uh, Lynn? Uh, yeah. Hi, Terry and Hi. Greg. I just Hi, wanted Lynn. to remind you to remind everyone that. Um, we can uh, do donations for Frank on PayPal, and I believe those instructions are on Eucadia. But Terry, if you would confirm that, and there's also a need for the uh, mailings out of the north, which is Canada. They're running into um, a postal strike, and they're going to have to send everything private carrier, which is $85 per envelope. So if anybody's in a position where they can help them, um, I, I'm hoping that information can be uh, put up on, on Eucadia, University Eucadia info, and um, just, just wanted to be sure and remind everybody of both things. Well, that would be helpful if we can get that information on how to fo- help folks there in Canada. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, and and if Jen is on the call, maybe she can, uh, she and and Gerald can get something up on University Eucadia. Dot info on that. Okay. 
Great. Thank you. Lynn. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, All right, Greg, uh, why don't you go down through that list again, and then we'll get to our caller from Texas. And okay. Uh, I, I'll throw this out there, too. I, I, I'm going to throw this out. If, if, I, if, if, if any of us are actually making regular donations somewhere right now as a, as for a ministry or something, I would, I would suggest strongly, it's my opinion now, not to do this, but my opinion would be is to direct those donations towards Frank right now. And uh, because Frank is the one who's actually doing the work to free all of us on this earth. And by freeing us, then this thing changes over and we won't have to worry about making donations anymore to anything or for anybody. So just consider that this could be the end of that whole system of having to donate at all anymore if we can get this thing fully moving forward. But we really need to take care of Frank. That's his number one priority. Okay. My, my book list is um, start off with the um, um, journey of UCA. Um, I'd read the introduction to Eucadia.com if you want to get an idea as to where Frank's coming from. But I would read the journey of UCA to get an understanding. And, I, and like I said, my way of doing it was read the first couple chapters and then go to the end and read some conclusions to have an idea as to really where he's going with this. And the science is sound and, and, and the mathematics is sound in what he's laid out there as well. Um, this, the next one would be um, uh, the Dea Magisterium, the Covenants of One Heaven. No, I'm, no, wait, no, it's not. I'm sorry. Pactum de Singularis Talum. Pactum de Singularis Talum, the Covenants of One Heaven. And from there, I would go into canons, the, the canons of the divine law, natural law, uh, positive law, which I think is going to be in front of that will be cognitive law, and then ecclesiastical law. Now, Frank had said. Originally, in the first calls, I was on with him in November, that if you read the canons of positive law three times through, it would change your whole DNA. And I believe I understand how that happens now. It, 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 it corrects all the errant thinking of how we think the law should operate and understanding that. And in doing so, I think it restructures our brain properly. But anyways, but, um, so that's what I would do. And then from there, I would read also the Day of Magisterium, um, which is on oneevil.org, but Ron has posted and I would I would read uh, um, the Soul Code, which I don't think is completely posted. I think only one chapter of it's posted, so that we can get the whole thing, finish the whole thing, get the rest of it up there. Um, and then uh, I just lost my thought where I would go from there. So I'm gonna have to come back to it. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. I have these in my head, but anyways. Um, but I, I and I and if you want to know the biblical issues, go to the OneFaithOfGod.org. Um, to, to settle that for yourself, and as, as I and others have done. Um, uh, if you want to know about historical figures that are listed on oneevil.org, give you an idea as to really where they were coming from. And uh, again, one of the things that the world has wanted us to believe that they're all evil, but when they're really just mentally ill. So there is no evil, it's just a bunch of mentally ill, crazy people running around. Anyway, okay, let's take some questions. <laughs> all right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. And uh, we'll go to Texas here on the phone. Hello. Are you there, Texas? Okay. It's uh, Central Pennsylvania, anyhow. <laughs> this is the oh. second time. It's... Uh, uh, Sego. Uh, uh, Greg. I'm, I'm ready. Why do we call him Jesus Christ? His name is not Jesus Christ. It's, it's um, Yeshia Ben Joseph. Right. Um, but I'm speaking to well, an that, audience of mostly people who are used to hearing yes. it in English. Right. Well, under, understand that um, that's the first part of the lie. That that name is brought up by uh, Saul of Tarsus and Josephus, and that's right. deception. That deception right there. But I agree. By the way, thank you for you are the one who introduced me to to uh, Eucadia and Frank. So I thank you, and also I appreciate Ron. You know, so it's it's all been good. Um, but and I will yeah. use that, Ray, and I will use the Yahashua Ben Joseph, Ben Joseph, because that that is technically correct, and that is actually the name of a a man who actually lived on the earth. So yes, that that's the appropriate name to use. Yeah, because there really was there really was no Jesus Christ. Right. Because right. one that whole concept one is, was created by the that, that concept like that was created by. Saul of Tarsus, Paul, Josephus, and Matthias, and their teacher Gamaliel. Yes, absolutely. That was a created entity. Yes. And 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 uh, 
actually his main was Zoroasterism was but he, he followed the Hebrew way, but Zoroasterism was uh 